Well, hello everyone. Dave here from Informed America and talking to you about the recent Trump tweet. Uh, as uh, you saw the picture there in the announcement post, uh, President Trump tweeted out, uh, we, are the un- we are united in our effort to defeat the invisible China virus. And many say that it's patriotic to wear a face mask and when you can't, uh, when you can't socially distance. There's nobody more patriotic than me. Your favorite president. There's a picture of him wearing a mask, sort of sitting out there like this. Uh, now he's, So President Trump has been resisting wearing the face mask for, for a while, uh, but now is basically endorsing mask wearing as a patriotic act. I'd love to know what you all think about that uh, story here out of uh, F- Fox News. I was noting how President Trump uh, for months refused to wear a coronavirus face mask. Uh, by the way, not true. Uh, for uh, candidate, Democrat candidate Joe Biden, he's out there wearing a mask uh, all the time. Uh, in contrast uh, to President Trump, who has been resisting wearing it, there was a uh, when he went to Walter Reed Hospital on July 11th, I believe uh, he he wore a mask there, uh, just being safe and smart. And now uh, endorsing mask wearing for all of us. I know many of you are not fans of the mask mandates, uh, so I'd be curious uh, to know what what you all think about that. Uh, now, so. Uh, also, oh, he's saying he's also going to start doing the COVID, uh, the COVID nineteen briefings. Um, so uh, that's uh, some news there. I mean, it, it is getting to the point now. Uh, it is late July, getting into August. It's gonna, it's full swing the campaign season. And uh, as I said to to all of you uh, a day or two ago, Trump is behind in the race, and he's got to make up lost ground. Uh, and maybe, um, and he's noting here now when President Trump did say this about the mask, he says, "I want people to have." Certain freedom. This is in regard to the national mandate, which he has resisted, uh, saying leaving it up to states, counties, cities, towns uh, to make up their own decisions. Here he says, "I don't want. I want people to have certain freedom, and I don't believe in a national mandate." Now he says uh, he doesn't agree with the CDC guidelines that if everybody wears a mask for four to six weeks, it could get this under control. He says, "I don't agree with that statement." And if everybody wears a mask, everything disappears. He says, "Hey, Fauci said don't wear a mask. Our Sur- Surgeon General, terrific guy, said, said don't wear a mask, and that's true." It's not just uh, Fauci and the Surgeon General. It was also the media saying you don't need to wear a mask. It's no big deal. It's not going to help uh, spread the transmission of COVID-19, which, of course, was a lie. They were saying it because there was a mask sor- shortage for uh, for uh, medical medical personnel. We didn't. We let our stockpile deplete over the last few years, and there wasn't enough to go around. And they told you basically not to buy it because of hoarding and all that. And now here we are, wear a mask. Now I I, I don't believe there's a conspiracy there. I think it was just a, a noble lie, as uh, Zach and I talked a little bit about it on the BS Pod coming out today. Uh, masks definitely will stop the transmission. Um, I mean, you just think about it logically. Uh, you don't need, you don't need to. Doesn't need any <laughs> any big medical expertise. That if you sneeze into something, it will block the stuff coming out of your mouth uh, to some degree, which will help uh, uh, lessen the spread. But I, I love to know what you think about Trump uh, reversing just a little bit here, um, endorsing mask wearing for all of us. Uh, still not doing the national mandate. Do you agree with this stance by the president? Um, I do. I, th- I think it's a good. I think it's a good move. Um, it's, it's, I think it's it's just fine to wear a mask. You know, you go into a grocery store, you put it on, you, you get out, you take it off. No big deal. Um, and so, let's see, it's Charles Osborne says, I believe he says, if you can't, can't social distance, then wear a mask. Yeah, absolutely, Charles. Uh, that's exactly what his tweet said. Uh, it's patriotic to wear a mask when you can't socially distance. And, of course, there's no, there's, there's nobody more patriotic than me, your favorite president. <laughs> so that was my, that was my terrible Trump impersonation. Um, so that, I mean, that's it on that. But it is a, a change, a, a big change from the president. So I want to get your thoughts. I also want to move on to um, uh, your comments here because uh, many of you were commenting on the story on our Facebook page about the Informed American post. Uh, family that owns New York Times owned slaves. Uh, many of you had a reaction to this. Um, you know, basically about cancel culture. Um, and so I'll just start here with. Deborah Poo says, go find, go find their house and harass them. Sorry, no good, worthless paper. Pure evil Democrats own slaves. Deb- Debbie Grierson says, let's see if, they, if the cancel culture makes demands to shut them down. They went, on after, they went after an American icon, John Wayne. So let's see if uh, we play the same game with a known Democrat puppet media outlet. Uh, Hugh Walker says, cancel it, burn it down. Uh, Kill Black, so what? <laughs> 
Uh, Carol uh, Carol Jones says figures. Uh, Joanne Lidke says, "Oh my God, boycott!" Uh, Broody Willis shut him down. Harold Hicks, imagine that. Cheryl Peavy, let's be fair. Not one of us had any control over what our ancestors did. I despise their liberal social BS. Let's judge them for what they are, not what their ancestors did. Not fair point there. Uh, and then uh, we got one more here. Got to cancel. Roy, Ray Foster says, "Got to cancel New York Times now." How dare them? LOL. Uh, Larry Grooms, people will say anything uh, because they are part of the bless, uh, bleeding heart liberals agenda. Anybody can try to come after me. I'm like Donald Duck. I don't give up. <laughs> F-U-C-K. Well, thank you, Larry Grooms. Now, I do want to address something. And, I, and I've been seeing this, uh, this whole thing with, with cancel culture. And, um, and, and we know what this is, right? I mean, you, you have the left mob going after you know, anybody they don't like, anybody they're offended by, trying to ruin them, trying to cancel them, trying to get them uh, deplatformed, have their lives ruined and all this stuff. And I've been seeing a little bit of, the, of people on the right or the center, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, mostly the right, um, Things like this. Well, you know, you're going after um, uh, maybe right-leaning people for their bad history. Let's go after the leftists for their bad history. Now, I, I understand where this is coming from, but it doesn't work. It's not going to work. I mean, we've seen this. Look, Joe Biden, right? He was for segregation back whenever. Uh, and and fine. But you know what? Unfortunately, guys, we don't control the culture. We don't control the media. Uh, we don't. We're not the ones. It's the New York Times, right? The, le- the left will eat its own eventually, um, at some point. And you've seen some evidence around it, nibbling around the edges. But look, by the time, and here's the point: by the time they come around to cancel the New York Times, well, by then, <laughs> all of us uh, to the right of the New York Times will have, will have all been gone, dead, canceled you know, murdered, who knows? Uh, so by the time they make their way, you know, that's a really long game to play guys. Uh, the New York times isn't going anywhere. The New York times isn't getting, isn't getting canceled. The left isn't going to go after their own, uh, not, not anything institutionally, uh, like the way it will against the right. So I think trying to play this game, I think trying to play this game is a, is a fool's errand, uh, trying to call out, trying to call out the left for their hypocrisy. I mean, it's 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 hypocritical on its own on its own on its own face. Uh, so calling them out isn't going to go anywhere. But I wasn't going to get into this. But since since I, uh, I I sort of got on on you guys a little bit about uh, trying to call, and I know a lot of it was in good fun, and you know of course because the truth is, and as one of the comments in there was, you know everybody there's bad history all around. Everyone's got bad history, and if you go back far enough. Uh, there's someone who did something bad and it's not just slavery. It could be murder. It could be whatever. Um, you know, this people, I mean, the story of oppression, or I'm sorry, humanity is the story of, of oppression. I mean, we get this thing about native American land, sacred ground. Well, you know, most of the, you know, maybe that tribe at some point, the tribe who was in say, you know, the Mount Rushmore controversy, just to get into that, whoever, whoever the Lakota tribe, I believe it is, uh, the Lakota Held, hold that land or held that land before uh, Americans, Europeans came and took it. But, you know, it's not like the Lakota just, you know, it, it were burst into that land or something. I'm sure at some point the Lakota tribe took it or pushed some other tribe off of that land who, going back, had pushed another tribe off of that land, you know, and, you know, back and back and back. And, you know, the grievance will never end. So I do agree with that. Look, what I did say... This isn't a good. Uh, this isn't a good tactic politically. I don't think to try to call the left out for their hypocrisy and cancel them because they're the cancelers, right? They're the ones doing the canceling, and they're not going to cancel themselves. And and like I said, by the time you'll we'll be in full communist revolution by the time the New York Times gets canceled, destroyed. So just forget it. I mean, that's a really long game to play. <laughs> by then, we'll all be dead. But there is a way. And again, this there is a way to fight back just a little bit. And if you want to know how. Uh, it's not by going. It's not by. It's not by doing the doing cancel culture tit for tat. It's not going to work. But there is a story here. This is out of. Uh, I it came across. This is all over the place. But um, this one just happens to be from uh, Revolver. Revolver News. The story about Red Bull. The Red Bull Corporation energy drink. Red Bull just purged high level execs who pushed for quote diversity and inclusion. Uh, and, uh, so, and here we go. Red Bull, uh, just reminded that they quote wokest employees who call the shots and a total massacre of social justice warrior employees. Not only there were two top North American executives fired, but they're entire to marketing teams and culture teams that were dedicated, uh, uh, to, uh, push it basically like, um, you have people, high level executives in, um, uh, pushing for like, I guess 
Black Lives Matter messaging and that sort of a thing, um, which is fine. Uh, but oh, the story comes from the from the Wall Street Journal, uh, the maker of energy. Yeah, the, so um, so this is actually an Austrian company. I didn't know that. It says that Red Bull didn't give a reason for the changes, which were announced in internal memo mon- Monday. Uh, Miss Taylor, one of the ones who was fired, has been working on diversity and inclusion efforts within the company that Miss Kozak supported for several years, but was met with op- opposition when she began advocating for Red Bull to be more overt in its support for racial justice over the last month. And uh, and uh, some employees had recently raised concerns over what they consider the company's inaction on the Black Lives Matter movement. So fine. Now you can you can that's fine to push for that. Uh, but I guess what what it became was Red Bull decided. Look, are we in business to sell energy drinks, or are we in business to push for social justice or racial justice or whatever? And uh, Red Bull decided. No, we're we're actually in business to to sell the drinks. So you know we've got high level executives focusing on everything else besides selling the drink. So can we get rid of these people and then sell the drink? And I think that's kind of the answer. Rather than doing, you don't cancel them on their on the left's own moral terms. I think that's the point here because uh, that, that's just what that is. Well, they're going after slave owners or whatever. They they're going after Washington. They're going after Jefferson because they own slaves. And hey, look at the New York Times. They had slaves too, or the owners, or the family, of the owners. Uh, yeah, the long down whatever that family is. Um, at some point, they had they had been slave owners, and now they own the New York Times. So they got to be canceled too, right? Nah, it just doesn't work that way. What it is is something like this, uh, something like Red Bull taking a stand, and not to cancel. This isn't cancellation. This is just you're not doing your job here. You're pushing for things that isn't part of what we're doing. We're we're here to sell energy drinks. What does what does uh, whatever this you know latest uh, uh, whatever the mob is out, whatever the Black Lives Matter, whatever, but. Whatever they're doing doesn't has nothing to do with selling energy drinks. So let's focus on that. And I think that's the way. If you're looking for a way, maybe of fighting back, and it's not even fighting back. It's just being. That's not what we're doing. We're here to sell drinks. Uh, and I think that's a, that's maybe a, a better way. And uh, we'll see uh, if if any other corporations take this uh, take this action and and do something similar to that. So I wanted to. I know this kind of a, this ended up being a little bit longer than I thought. Uh, but sort of a couple of things kind of bled into each other, and I wanted to address your comments. Of course, the mask wearing, Trump's on it now. Um, I've got one. I wear it. Of course, in my county now, when I go into a store, I have to wear it. Uh, but I don't mind. I don't think it's a big deal. And I think it's. And, and I genuinely do think it, it makes good common sense to wear a mask. Uh, and and that's uh, that's where I stand. Love to know what you think about all this stuff I covered today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And you know, as we're in this information war, something to keep in mind, guys. Everything is fake. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.